Hey there, John here from MySolarHome.us. My latest video, it's about the truth about Tesla solar panels and their game-changing prices. What the hell is going on with Tesla and their really low solar panel prices for homes? I'm going to explore that in depth today. I'm going to talk about what their prices are, what kind of equipment they're using, what kind of warranty they're providing you, what is their installation process looking like, and some thoughts about after sales. So what exactly is going on? Tesla, or Solar City as they were known earlier, was the number one solar company in the US for residential installs for a long time. 2018-19, they made some course corrections. Elon Musk bought the company over from his nephews who used to run Solar City. And Tesla went into a kind of, you know, wait and watch and their market share slid. Today, they're a distant number three. The number one company is Sunrun, and you might not have heard about them, but they're big and huge. Sunrun bought the number two US company doing solar panels, which is Vivint, and today they've become the largest solar company by far. Again, you know Elon Musk, he likes to win, and he likes to be in sexy businesses. Solar panels is not very sexy, and he is not a number one, so it's kind of, he's putting his eggs into one basket and trying to make sure he wins in this one. So there lies the question of where this is heading Let's look at prices. So are the prices as good as they say in the market? Yes, the solar panel prices from Tesla are pretty good. They're, you know, I, you know, I, I would say they're pretty amazing for the kind of equipment that they're giving you. They're not giving you the best equipment, but, but they're giving you pretty close to fairly good equipment. So they've got four system sizes. This is a plus for Tesla and a minus for you and me who are planning to buy solar system. You only get four sizes. No questions asked, no ifs and buts. 4.08 kW or 8.16, 12.24 or 16.32. The prices are fixed $2.01 per watt. So that's $8,200 for the 4.08 kW, $16,400 for the 8.16, $24,600 for the 12.24, and $32,800 for the 16.32 kW system. Now, this is available nationwide. There are different incentives in different states. Massachusetts, California, Arizona, New Jersey, they all have different incentives. Tesla also offers you money for some of those incentives. So the net price, which I'm now going to tell you about, is after just the tax credit, no incentives. Because the incentives are different, it's difficult to compare prices across states. But this is what you get across every state in the United States. 26% tax credit in 2020. That reduces your 4.08 kW system price by 2,132 and you're at a net price of 6,068 bucks. 4,264 is the tax credit for the 8.16 kW and you arrive at a net price of 12,136. The 12.24 kW gives you a 6,396 kW, 6,396 tax credit and your net out of pocket is 18,204 and the 16.32 net out of pocket is 24,272. In all of these, Tesla also has rental options. The 4.08K, you can rent it out at 65 bucks a month, the 8.16 at 130, the 12.24 at 195, the 16.32 at 220. Now, these prices, like I said, they vary across the states a little bit because when the incentives are added on, but to compare prices, these are good because incentives apply to all the other vendors as well. So what is, what is Sunrun doing? And what are your local manufacturers doing in terms of prices? Sunrun's prices are a good dollar more than uh, Tesla. They're at 290, three bucks, 350. And why this huge price difference? It's simple, Tesla has cut all their sales and acquisition costs. They don't have any salespeople. All the people who are buying them are buying them through their online on the website. They, I do not know what their customer service is looking like. Maybe they made compromises there too. But basically, one third of the cost of any home solar system in the US today comes from these soft costs. The sales guys, the guys who are knocking on your doors, who are making proposals, making designs, applying for permits to your township, talking to them, making sure they're approved. All that Tesla is cut up. They've got four sizes, four types of plans, Everything is cookie cutter, take it or leave it. So this has got pluses and minuses. The pluses obviously are the amazing prices. The minuses are you might have to buy a system which is either smaller or larger than you need. Okay. 
and there are some other questions which we'll get into. Let's talk about equipment. So Tesla has standardized on Hanwha Q cell panels. These are very good panels, good looking panels, black and black, 19% plus efficiency, you know, good, good choice. But just so you know, they're not the best in the market. If you're going to look at, say, a solar area 400 watt panel, which is a 22% efficiency panel, it's really good looking, high efficiency, you're not going to be able to get that. You want LG panels? No, sir. Panasonic panels? No, sir. Sun power panels? No, sir. So that is an issue. You don't get the best of the best, but you get pretty much a very high quality panel. I've said earlier that it doesn't really matter if you go for a Hanwha or go for a Solaria, as long as your inverter is an N-phase microinverter. And this is where I take issue with Tesla. They have, they're not using N-phase microinverters at all. They sometimes use optimizers and, you know, they're using string inverters for a lot of installation which is real no-no in my book. They're the most low efficiency option uh, in terms of harvesting the sun's energy. Tesla gives you no guarantee what they're going to install on your roof, whether it's going to be a string, optim a, a string inverter or an optimizer. If you're lucky, you'll get the optimizer, which is a reasonably good choice, but you might end up with a string inverter, which is a big risk in my opinion. You're putting in 25, 30,000 bucks or, you know, a big sum of money there. If you don't know what equipment you're getting, it's a little scary. The other thing is the mounting system. Tesla uses a rayless mounting system known as Z. Now this is good in terms of they've got less penetrations on your roof, but I have a question about their structural integrity in terms of, you know, for colder markets like the Northeast, New Jersey or Massachusetts, there's a lot of snow. And when the snow lies on top of your panels, all that loads get distributed on the panel's structural integrity instead of on the rail system. If you see the rail assist, railed systems, which see, see picture here, the panels actually rest on the rails and all the load of the panels or whatever is on top, including the snow, goes through the rails equally distributed. You have a robust system. With the railless system, there's a question mark. I wouldn't worry so much in California, but in the Northeast, I am a little worried about the ZEP railless system. The other thing that I've heard about, and this is again a little bit of hearsay, is that 10 years from now, if you need to replace your roof, getting the ZEP railless system off your roof is very expensive and Tesla charges a bomb. Most of the other vendors don't do that. So that's about equipment. A little bit, there's some pluses. The panels are very good. The inverters very if you don't get the ones you want. If you get a string inverter, the racking is reasonable. What about warranty? Warranty right now seems to be a, you know, some, a place where Tesla is not really scoring. They have a 10-year warranty on the equipment compared to the 25-year warranty that everybody else is offering. The solar panels have 25-year warranties, but their workmanship warranty and the system warranty is just 10 years. So that's, again, a little bit of a downer. What about installation? Now, these, the information I'm giving you right now is based on people that I've talked to. And, you know, there's a limited number of people that I can talk to. So it might not all be totally accurate, but it's worth your while if you're doing a Tesla install to ask Tesla about it. Since they're doing cookie cutter installs, you know, it's either this size or that size, they also like to do a cookie cutter install in terms of the conduits that they use. Now, any solar panel system on your roof and needs to be connected to your main electric panel. And they do it by putting wiring through conduits. Now, a good, you know, somebody who, a solar panel in installer who's, who wants to give you the best aesthetics, he, want, he makes sure that the, that the wiring goes through your attic or they, they, they take it over longer runs if necessary so that it's hidden from sight from the people in front of your home so you don't lose your curb appeal. I have heard that in their effort to produce costs, they sometimes run conduits which are visible and ugly. Question to ask. The other thing that I've heard about is that before a solar panel installs, Tesla actually inspects your roof. Is it good enough for solar? Do they need to do a replacement? If they assess that you need a roof replacement, they actually ask you to replace the roof using their own roofing vendor who's more expensive normally than the local vendor. Again, this is hearsay, but I've heard people telling me that they had to go with the Tesla roofer, pay more for the roofer, and then end up paying more overall. Finally, I have a question about after sales service. Now, there's, there's no information on this right now because this is so new. Panels, Tesla's solar panels, 
game-changing prices or something which has just happened now. What about service going forward? Is it going to be affected? I'm thinking if Tesla maintains and you know this continue to support this should be fine. What I worry about is what is Elon Musk's long game? He likes to be a winner in whatever category he plays in. He's number one in space, he's going to Mars, he's number one in EVs, but he's a distant number three, or he'll be a distant number two right now in solar panels. And he wants to be number one. And this is his master strategy to hit that. If he hits this and he hits number one, I think we're all in good shape. You're gonna be you know, happy that you went with Tesla. But supposing he does not hit his numbers and he decides that this is a business that he wants to divest, it's possible. He just might sell it off and then you'll be her, you'll be left holding your holding the bag. So that is my worry about uh, Tesla's after sales service going forward. That is he going to be a big success in this? So in 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 summary, the pricing, the equipment, extremely good value. So if you're looking for value, you're looking for good equipment, the Tesla choice is great, go for it. But if you're looking for a little bit extra in terms slightly better equipment, you're looking for more from your solar system and you're willing to pay a little more, choose a local vendor. Their prices are not all that different from Tesla. Instead of $2 and one, you might be paying to 50 a watt or to 60 a watt. But you'll get the best of panels, the best of microinverters, the best looking system. So it's, it makes sense to consider them at least in your mix. So that's it for me. Uh, I hope this is clarified and you know a little bit more about the truths behind Tesla's game-changing solar panel prices. I hope you like this video. Do share it, do like it, subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of other videos on solar incentives, prices, what to do, how they installed, etc. on my channel. Do come see them and thank you very much and have a great day.